Aloha and good afternoon from uh, Thin Tech Hawaii. My name is James McKay. As you can tell, I'm not Justine, unfortunately, or Matt. They are both on R&R &R for some good roots regeneration. So I'm taking over the uh, Pharma Series uh, for the next three weeks. Um, it's going to be a probably a little bit different, uh, more of a talk story setup situation. Uh, today's topic, we did have Kearney Dudley, who has been a long time community activist, um, trying to get the word out about a project that I've been surprised uh, not a lot of people in Hawaii have been following, particularly on Oahu. It's a project called Ho'opili. So it's uh, going to be the largest ever uh, one sort of occupant resident company uh, commercial residential development on the south side of the Oahu shore, probably the only contiguous bit of open land that's some of the most productive farmland on Oahu today that remains in farming. Uh, it's quite a la landmark case and from my history in Hawaii I've been here a bit over five years so I ended up moving out here from Arizona where I was very um, aware of the urban sprawl and rapid development in, in Arizona. When I came here, just learning about Hawaii and the, the ethics and the importance of agriculture, I just assumed Hawaii was a bit ahead of the game in regards to land use development and responsible development. And um, through interesting meetings, meeting Governor Ariyoshi and learning about some of the older land use practices, that was definitely the case. Seems like recently the land use rules have changed to be much more pro-development and less in keeping the agricultural lands in production, which has impacts not just on food production, which is now also one of the Governor Ige's new claims to where we want to take the state is more food production, but also other things such as community traffic, livability, sprawl, water, resources, energy. So today's topic is really um, going to be speaking with some, some, some local community members from the, the west side of Oahu and Waianae. Um, so we, with us, we, we have Mark. So welcome to the show, Mark. Aloha. Yeah, Ma aloha. And Ale, <coughs> welcome too. Um, so these gentlemen uh, live out west, and yes. as a lot of people who live that way and also have to commute into town for work, it's a good part of your, your, your population out there. And M Mark's currently running for the House representative seat yes. in, in seat 44 in Waianae. So a lot of his representatives are going to be impacted by this project, which um, uh, probably everyone out living out west has been tracking because it is going to impact their lifestyles. And Keone was a great activist, so I really wanted to thank him because um, off his own initiatives and his own passions for, I think, what's right and Pono for Hawaii, he really was fighting this battle for the best of what I, what I consider is the right thing. So we, we probably have a biased board. Unfortunately, we don't have Biao <laughs> Horton, who is the developer in this situation, sitting at the table, but I heard enough of their rhetoric that yeah. it's really about housing and food and jobs. And the, the, the food part definitely was kind of a token thing I, I felt about that. So um, they, I'd love for a, a perspective from sort of the, the west side of what, what your guys take away. This, this project was in the Supreme Court last year mm -hmm. and uh, Kieran, Dr. Dudley was on the show about a year ago. So I just wanted to have kind of a, uh, a follow up. We actually, he sent us a photo. I'm not sure if we can get to that one, but so we're at the point now where they've broken ground on the project. So. Mm -hmm. The, the Supreme Court in Hawaii did rule that uh, this project's going to go ahead. Uh, it's you know it's a 20-year project. There, some you know I have the stats, stats here. I apologise. I didn't learn them all off by heart. But um, Keone has all these. But it, it's it's you know 1,554 acres. Yes. It's a 4.6 billion dollar project. So this is the the thank you the latest groundbreaking with you know, all the political leaders that were involved in in, in this kind of project. So. Um, like from from your your guys' perspective, now that this is actually a done deal and going ahead, what what would say be some of your your key, key concerns? Well, <clears throat> from a neighborhood board aspect, you know, um, as the neighborhood board chair of Y and I, we actually stood with Dr. Dudley. Um, he's actually a good friend of ours. He came out and he had um, shared with us his idea for a resolution. And his resolution was to try and prevent um, this development as well as some other uh, mega developments that we had coming on to divert Oahu. Well, actually it was island-wide it would be imposed, but what it would do was um, work with DPP to actually put an end to permitting for any kind of development. Um, on the Waianae Neighborhood Board, what we had done through my housing committee was adopted our own set of rules, which would be 
to stop development, um, issuing of the permitting, but to allow for, with an exception to the um, Department of Hawaiian Homelands, because you know we strongly believe, coming from the largest Hawaiian community in the world at 63%, that um, we still need to keep good on our promise. Well, the state needs to keep good as well as the Department of Interior to um, fulfill their obligation to our Hawaiian people, and that would be for providing housing through the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. So, yeah, it was something that we actually stood behind, and our position being multiple reasons. You know, from uh, of course there's the traffic because this is now the corridor into the Waianae Coast yeah, mm -hmm. yep. that you're proposing to put 70,000 uh, new drivers on the road at. Yep. And as you know, we already have a traffic dilemma out there on the coast, you know, Farrington. Uh, it's backed up on a daily basis. It used to just be weekdays, now it's Saturdays, sometimes even Sundays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've done some proactive measures working with uh, DOT and um, that would be our contra flow that we actually started about a month ago now. Um, that's only a band-aid solution, though. We don't have that secondary route in. So, of course, it's one of our major concerns when you want to propose such a large project uh, before our, our residents even hit the coast, you know. That's definitely going to catch our attention. So yeah. we, we sat down, we had serious talks with uh, Dr. Dudley, and we liked what he was proposing, and we, sto we chose to stand with him. Uh, we also stood with our brothers and sisters of the Aloha Aina movement, and from their aspect, they were looking at more the cultural and environmental impact. So, um, as you know, there's an issue with our native Pueo out, out on the um, Ever Plains in Honouli Uli. And I'll refer to it as Honouli Uli because, you know, Ho'opili is, that's not what the name of that place is. It's right. actual, it's actually Honouli Uli, so. It's, it's totally what we should be calling it. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. We don't want to give it too much uh, power with that Ho'opili name because Though they broke ground, the fight's not over yet. So, yeah. well, so he, he had talked about, and one of the things that uh, kind of inspired me to sort of connect with him again uh, was uh, the possibility of doing an e eminent domain mm -hmm. opportunity whereby the state itself would offer fair market value to D.R. Horton, take mm -hmm. over the land, mm -hmm. and offer them, you know, an allowable profit for them to, to walk away, leaving the land preserved in perpetuity for agriculture. But yes. it would be. It'd be owned by the state, very similar to the Whitmore project. So mm -hmm. the state's obviously committed to that project up further north on Oahu. So I don't know, the, the viability of the state taking on even more land, trying to stop what's already in action right now, mm. to me doesn't seem very probable, so. Yeah, well, there's, yeah. At this point it is, it's kind of late in the game, but you know, not to say that we wouldn't stand behind it if they would entertain that idea, I mean, that we're looking at every option to try and put a stop to it because, like you had mentioned, um, the main issue behind it is, you know, we need that ag land. That land has produced so much food for us over the years. Um, we already have a water shortage, you know. Yeah. It's no, it's no surprise to any of us that you know, we're not getting the water that we're supposed to. And what kind of trickles down from that is, you know, our loss of land because of it being such a limited resource and having all these new companies, developers come in and propose all these mega projects. You know, housing is important, but I think it needs to be done in good, well, it needs to be planned out way better. And I think, um, I'm not a fan of these uh, rezoning, you know, rezoning, especially when it comes to ag land, rezoning it for residential use. I don't think that's the route we need to look at. Um, I think there's, there's bigger landowners that we should be entertaining uh, offers with. Right, well, not we, but they should be. The state, yeah, where yeah. the land isn't so yeah. fertile and productive and already in agriculture yes. for the, the purposes of And it's bigger than just yeah. the state. I mean, we, we have military. The military has a lot of good land that, you know, we're even looking at because we work closely with our, um, with our homeless on, on the Waianae coast, you know. We have uh, the Waianae, um, Puhonua o Waianae, which is in the Waianae Boat Harbor. And, you know, now we're talking about possibly getting a permanent lease at the harbor where we're at, but we're also entertaining ideas that would mean um, looking at other large land parcels, and one of which we've actually narrowed down is a former military-owned lot and that would, was recently turned over to the state, so DHHL now uh, manages that property, and uh, they actually listed it earlier this year, so, you know, if we can find deals like that, yeah. I'm sure DR Horton can too. So right. going after our ag land, I don't think that's Pono. I think uh, there's other options out there and I'd like to 
uh, it'd make me happier if they started looking into other more viable sources. Right. Yeah. So in, in your position in running for the state right now, would be things that you might want to be doing if you get elected or you rally for support? Like what, what sort of things could you see in the political system that might help what you want to see happen be implemented? Um, definitely is, you know, because again, going back to the large landowners here, uh, the HHL does have a lot of land that they lease out, and um, I, I don't want to see them having to give up the land because ultimately that land should be turned over to our Hawaiian people for use for their you know, residential housing through DHHL. But there's other large parcels. Again, there's um, land that the military uses with lease agreements with the state. I think some of them are coming up. Um, towards the end of their lease. So maybe before we go and renew their leases, we could talk about possibly turning some of that land over. I think it kind of goes hand in hand with the military downsizing with their boots on ground anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So having this type of large land ownership by the military or stewardship, I should call it, because they actually don't own the land. Um, I think talking with them about possible development on the land that they are occupying right now would be probably a better better option yeah, to yeah. start looking into. Yeah, and, and they're really not using the land. No. For, it's really just keeping it for yes. the future, which is really not a productive use of the land. Well, yes. we, we are at a crossroads right now, so the, the conference that was just in town a few weeks ago, the IUCN conference, was yes. all about planet at the crossroads. And mm -hmm. it's kind of what I've long felt. And Hawaii is really on the cutting edge for that. I think we have a, a tipping point now where, you know, and this is a key decision of do we keep land in ag or mm -hmm. do we develop it? And for the reasons that are way too complicated and diverse, as you know, we're not going to cover that in yeah. half an hour. But there, there's, that's yeah, going to take another it, discussion. It, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a couple of generations probably. Yeah. Looking, looking back, and that, that's kind of really was the, the sort of, and I don't want to give up on the thing either, but it seems like uh, the ball is kind of going down that. And I'd hate to say, you know, 50 years looking back, we'll be like, oh, I remember that show when, yeah. you know, they'd just broken ground. But, you know, hopefully that'll set the tone for, you know, there's all sorts of, questions about North Shore development and yes. other, other islands too, which are just as important. Yeah, and let's not forget about Central Oahu, you know, they are, um, they already got the permitting for Ho'opili, but they also have the permitting for Coral Ridge. So Coral Ridge is also rich in natural resources there, and you know, that is something that they're definitely going to develop. Um, that, like I said, the permitting process has already gone through, and yeah, that's going to add additional traffic, I mean, in a way, being West Siders, we're kind of like, oh, okay, now they get to deal with some of the traffic. Yeah, but Sh share the love. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we got to cut out for yeah. a, a quick word, and we'll be back in a minute. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kawilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state, as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So, Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. Aloha, welcome back. I'm James McKay with the uh, Hawaii Food and, Food and Pharma Series on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, you can join our hotline too, or you put the uh, tweet out there if you're a tweeter, or you can also call in on the number that's going to be on the screen in a second. And um, with me here, we, we have uh, Mark, and um, sorry, I forgot your name again. Anale. Kanale, that's right. Oh, I love it in Kauai, right? But, um, <laughs> name after the moon. <laughs> we are talking about the project called Ho'opili, or more appropriately, Honoluli. Honoluli. <laughs> and um, just to set the scene about what we're actually talking about with this uh, 1,554 acre site 
that was purchased by D.R. Horton over 10 years ago, pretty well, now, and it's been a, a fight for them since 2009 to develop this land. And it's just been ruled by the Supreme Court last December in 2015 that they can go ahead and, and build uh, their, their homes there over the next 20 years. So um, we're kind of having a sort of a retroactive look back on the project as it starts. So I want, I want to just put up on the screen just the, uh, the overview of the map of where this project's at, just so we know the, the gravity of the landmass that we're talking about here. So, um, and as we've covered earlier in the show, everyone that's been over to Wainai or Nanakuli, either going there or coming back at the wrong time, there probably isn't a right time right now. As Mark has said, it's busy, but that's a lot of houses there. They'd be right next to the H1. That uh, and the studies at the land use committee that I actually testified against, stupidly enough, because I thought I'd make a difference. But <laughs> after seeing the sprawl in Arizona, I just felt this was a really bad project for Oahu. But they had very compelling traffic studies mm -hmm. to prove that the traffic is going to get really bad on H1. Definitely. So that's going to basically just cause, you know, even though it's not flowing now really anyway, a huge bottleneck for yep. all the commuters there. But uh, that, more importantly, that that landmass right now it has some of the most productive. Uh, farmland that is producing yeah. quite a high percentage of food for Oahu. Yes. So, you know, the, a lot of the arguments we heard were, you know, why can't we just grow food on the big island because they have all the land. But, you know, that, that doesn't help. In my mind, every island should be becoming as self-independent as possible. Yeah. And we should be growing as much food by local people, local employment for local people. That's kind of the goal. So we've kind of seen this kind of development tried like further out west and uh, there's some sort of not of this scale, obviously. This is the, the biggest project that ha has actually been uh, permitted, but also, more importantly, has gone through the Land Use Committee and yes. had the rezoning uh, from agricultural land to residential land. So that's kind of set a, a very dangerous precedent in my mind of going ahead. But So, um, Anle, do you, do you in Makaha, we've seen some similar kind of developments sort of proposed and go forward, go back. How, how's the community kind of reacted there and, and what's been the results? Uh, <laughs> definitely not, not too uh, happy about it because, uh, well, as like uh, Mark was saying earlier about the traffic problem and stuff like that, and these guys, you know, they don't live out there. So you can go plan all you like, look at paperwork and plan this, plan that, but we actually live there and we've got to deal with everything every day, you know, leaving Wainai and, and uh, you know, coming back home and stuff like that. Fortunately uh, for me, as a, I'm an artist, so I, I can just drop off my artwork or have somebody come pick them up and sell them in the stores, just send me a check. Uh, but yeah, I feel for everybody because I, I remember back in the days when I was a carpenter and stuff like that, I was already fighting a lot of traffic. And nowadays it's been getting worse. So Makai Valley, uh, I think we're looking at more development mm -hmm. since they tore down the uh, Makai uh, Sheraton Country Club. And yeah, so pretty much trying to keep up on all that stuff. And it, uh, it's going to be developing, coming all the way down to Farrington Highway from uh, the Maka Valley Towers, stuff like that. So there'll be a lot more increased traffic, trash, and water use, stuff like that. Uh, probably a lot more crime, stuff like that, which we don't want. We, when I people are pretty, pretty much a tight knit community, mm -hmm. especially you know, like Mark said earlier, we're the you know, largest uh, Hawaiian community in the world. And so, yeah, we have, really have to protect our resources. And uh, Honolulu Uli is one of them. Uh, definitely into sustainability. Because uh, I know we cannot eat money, cannot eat concrete, cannot eat houses. Mm -hmm. You know, only you guys have benefit from eating houses, uh, the termites. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> and I guess greedy guys that, you know, into development, they just look at, you know, stuff. And I know these guys pr pretty much, you know, behind the scenes, you know, looking at raw land, stuff like that. And you guys sit down and talk story about, you know, creating jobs, all kinds of different things, like projects they can develop. But they don't look at long term and, and what kind of impact it's going to have, you know, on the community. It's just thinking about dollars and yeah. cents and stuff like that. And they're not really looking at how we're supposed to adjust to life because these guys, you know, imposing all these different things on us, development. And now, you know, like I know across Colina, I think the Chinese bought, I think, 600 acres or something up right. there. And uh, <laughs> what they're going to do with all that land, you know, so we really get problems with Colina. Only one way in, one way out of Wainai. Yeah. So actually, I've been working on uh, with some uh, high school students and uh, taking over some places up uh, up the Wainai Valley that we know we can, and because it's Hawaiian homeland and we're Hawaiian, so we're gonna actually use some of this land that nobody's using because we have sort of like semi-dry uh, semi riverbeds. 
So uh, it, has, it has enough moisture like that, so we can clean up the place and divert water and make lohis and whatever uh, ground is all, you know, the lepo is all nice and moist. We we'll plant yeah. uli and stuff like that Get back and, to production. and work with our kids. And, because well, as part of our rice and also part of uh, trying to uh, acquire water rights back, which actually is our water, and try to get the water water supply to share our water, <laughs> and <laughs> so we can feed ourselves, feed our people, you know, next generation. So yeah. pretty much uh, making some Kolani moves, trying to open that up for you know possibilities, looking on uh, long term. You know, like hence the name Y and I. Mm -hmm. Y is water, yeah, and I is a mallet. Uh, I never seen water all mallet in a long time yeah. since my younger days and stuff like that. So Pretty I like to right see uh, the nice change and bring back the balance, you know, ecosystem. As part of my job as Kunahiki, and uh, Mark also is the uh, Ahupa rep and the uh, Moku rep. So we have actually a structure. So each Ahupa I have a representative to work with their people in their community. Sort of like I guess like you know. I guess most Polynesian style, whatever, you're the talking chief, and they work with their village, mm -hmm. you know, their people, and, you know, come to our Ahamoku uh, council and talk about, you know, issues and concerns and um, look at, you know, how we can try to deal with all this uh, invasion because, we know, uh, cost of living is not going to go down. They're always talking about, you know, helping the homeless and stuff like that, but when we're trying at the Boat Harbor, guys would donate, uh, try to donate roll-offs to deal with the, the trash issues. Oh, we need a special permit. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. I mean, it's, why do we need permit? We're doing your job, you know, do, yeah. cleaning up the yeah. community and trying right. to help the homeless, stuff like that. They claim they're helping, but they're not helping. Well, I think you got some good points there because, uh, you know, that if you can control your homeless problem, if you want to call it that, in your own community that way on DHHL, DHHL land with local small, smaller housing companies that can partner with DHHL to create these environments that are going to be appropriate and suitable, mm -hmm plus factor in f food areas as well. And that, that to me is the, the missed opportunity, which was kind of the title of this was like, do we have to f really choose between houses and food? Yeah. Really, we can't afford to choose. We should have both. We must mandate yes. both, in fact. And that's really kind of right. the beauty of the Hawaiian legacy and history is that they've, they've, they've been able to do that over generations, yes. thousands of years. You, you don't sacrifice one for the other because no. it is short term. And that's kind of the key is that, uh, you know, it's a mainland car company and that what I saw in the plans for the development is reminded me of Arizona and I'm yeah, like how could they yeah. do that here like of all places so the impact on agriculture mm -hmm. and food is directly tied to land and water use yes. as well in my mind is it's it's sacrificing one for the other which yeah. is is very dangerous right so, and right. from a cultural aspect you know historically once the ahupua system was put in place you know a long time ago um we we as Hawaiians you know Polynesians you see this throughout Polynesia is where the the people of the land, they know how to work with nature and not develop on nature and, you know, working against nature. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're proposing. We're actually trying to come in and ultimately establish our ahupua again, reestablish it mm -hmm. because they're there. And bring you know, back the balance. Yeah, yeah bring back the ecosystem. Yeah, and it's a vital part is having our food, you know. Again, going back to the choice between houses and food, it doesn't need to come down to that. We can have both. There can be balance. It's just you got to do it right. And they probably don't want to hear this, but it just takes better planning. And yeah, they got to take it, into consideration. And, and it's yeah. less, less profits for yes. uh, big, big companies that are yeah. building. That's why I'm, I'm really glad that uh, Lingle and uh, Abercrombie actually uh, created this uh, law, this Bill 288, mm -hmm. that actually empowers us Hawaiians. And actually, uh, uh, Kumu John Kaimikawa of Molokai actually kind of came up with this concept uh, called the Keoli. So he took like uh, eight strands of uh, kaula or cordage and he braided all the strands together so you know the, the concept or philosophy about you know if you get one arrow easy to break them but if you get you know 10 arrows whatever yeah. harder to break them yeah so same thing with the keole concept is that now we get all the eight strands so all the Hawaiian practitioners we work together uh, but that's only island wide I'm looking at not only the island uh, the po'os or uh, kunikis from the different islands uh, work together, but also the Konigis on each island work together and share our resources and uh, experiences, you know, collaborating, stuff like that, because um, some uh, places, you know, you know Hawaii is like, really unique, not every place is the same, yeah, you cannot use a rubber so. stamp. Which is why so, it's, it is important to, to develop from a local perspective, because yeah. every area is going to be different. So, you know, battles like for sovereignty and for, you know, keeping our land rights and our water rights, stuff like that, so uh, a lot of us guys already has experience. On, you know, on different things, and so we can kind of share and grow together and stuff like that as a people to protect what is rightfully ours and, and our resources. But 
we're not stingy. We will feed everybody, you know. Yeah, right. So, and the thing is, you know, what I do is, you know, work with, you know, any kind of race, any ethnic group. Because actually the main thing is teaching people of, uh, values of our kupuna and philosophy of our kupuna. Because that's where it's at. Right. Right. So once you learn that, you ma'a that, then, you know, we're all the same. We're all on the same page. Yeah. So we have a couple of minutes left, so I want to wrap up just on maybe a, a, a technical question first, just something you've been talking about is any uh, idea if the, the, the water that's going to be used for this development should have gone over to the west side? Is that still, is that part of that what might be going on? Or? Well, actually, it's funny you said that because I heard a rumor, I don't know how true it is, but oh, it did come out of, here. yeah, it's a, but it did come out of BWS and what it was was the bit of information we had says that once Hopili is done, a lot of our water that's already being diverted to, you know, other parts of Oahu mm -hmm. is going to actually, yeah, we're, they're okay. planning on Midwest. actually diverting even more water wow. to feed the Eva Plains. Mm. So, you know, again, YNI is going to carry the heavy burden of not just taking the trash and the homeless, but also providing water. And at some point, you know, it's going to burst at the seams. And yep. Yeah, it's something we really got on Makaala. we got to keep yeah. an eye on that. Because well, I think that's the key thing, right? So yeah. the baseline is what it is today. It's, it hasn't got better with the, the increased population anyway, but mm -hmm. if we have a lot more people there soon, you know, I hate to say I live by our mistakes, but so what's, uh, what humanity is really good at doing, rather than being wise and learning from our elders and listening to them, but, you know, we'll, we'll see where it's at. So yeah. any conclusion? I'll be with your race ahead and... Well, you, you've got a big vote coming up in a month? Yes. So we're about a month out. Um, we do have a couple events if I can make some announcements. Absolutely. So tomorrow night, if you want to come out and uh, get to hear a little bit more about our platform and engage me in conversation, uh, we're having for our West Siders, or even if you're coming from other parts of the island, uh, we'll be at Foster Realty on Farrington Highway in Waianae. Uh, we'll be there from 7 to probably about 8.30, 9 o'clock, and it's a Meet the Candidate event um, that they're putting on for me over there. Right. Also Saturday, tune in to Olelo Channel 53. They'll be streaming live the Westside Candidate um, Forum. So uh, ours is the only race, my race is the only one that has two candidates, so we'll be kind of, not going at it, but we'll be sitting down and, you know, something like this with a moderator. Just have phone boxing gloves. Ah, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Last time we're very we, we play nice out there. Contrary to what you heard about Y night, we we play nice. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of aloha. We always yeah. come in aloha. Yeah, we come aloha. aloha. All right, perfect. Well, thank you guys yeah. for coming out. It's been thank a trek. You. I know it's You're not welcome. a fun commute out here, so I appreciate you getting it downtown. Oh, it's a pleasure. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Best luck for your race. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, uh, it's been another series of Hawaii's uh, farm and food series, a farm and food series. We'll be back next week. I um, think you'll probably have something a little more hippie-ish and uh, interesting uh, in the roots with an uh, uh, interesting movement between the permaculture and surf community. Mm. See if we can get some volunteers for that. So until next time, thank you.